Hi, this video is going to be about the bones of the foot, um, some of their prominences or features, and the soft tissues that are related to those, um, and then the joints. So this is an um, artificial foot, or a, um, it's not a real skeleton, but it's fully articulated. Um, and I'm going to first point out the tarsals from this view. So this is the calcaneus and the talus. All of this is the talus. That makes up the hind foot, the talus and the calcaneus. The calcaneus, large bone. Obviously, it's our heel bone, and it's important for weight bearing. Then we've got the navicular here, the navicular, the cuboid, and the three cuneiforms, middle or first, intermediate or middle or second, and lateral or third cuneiform. And then, of course, and those make up the midfoot, the midfoot. And then we've got the metatarsals, first metatarsal, second metatarsal, third metatarsal, fourth metatarsal, and fifth metatarsal. And then, of course, the phalanges, two phalanges for the great toe, or hallux, three phalanges, let me fix this, <laughs> three phalanges for the lateral four toes. Didn't mention this is the right foot. Okay, so to look at um, the ankle joint, you can see the dome or trochlea of the talus articulating with the tibia, here's the medial malleolus, and the fibula, which is the lateral malleolus. So that makes up the talocruel joint or the ankle joint. Talocruel, T-A-L-O-C-R-U-R-A-L, talocruel. Crus means leg. Then the head of the talus articulates with the navicular. That makes up the talonavicular joint, which is part of the mid-tarsal or transverse tarsal joint. Then here's the calcaneocuboid joint, also part of the mid-tarsal or transverse tarsal joint. So I'm outlining the tarso, excuse me, the mid-tarsal joint or the transverse tarsal joint. Between the calcaneus and the talus is the subtalar joint or talocalcaneal joint. This is the posterior part of the subtalar joint. If I pull this apart, you can see where they articulate with each other. Okay, and then this here and here the anterior and middle facets of the calcaneus that articulate with the talus. So the subtalar joint is a compound joint, three, three, articular, um, three articular facets. Um, please check out my video that's just on the talus for lots of details about the talus. Okay, so we did the talocruel joint, talonavicular, calcaneocuboid, and subtalar joint. Then notice that the navicular articulates distally with the three cuneiforms. So the navicular articulates with both the medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms. Then notice that each cuneiform articulates with a second, meta, excuse me, with a metatarsal base. Medial cuneiform with the first, middle with the second, and the third with the lateral cuneiform. Those are the tarso metatarsal joints. Tarso metatarsal joints. And then here on the lateral side, you can see both the fourth and fifth metatarsals articulate with the cuboid. Those are also tarso metatarsal joints. Then to continue, these are the metatarsal phalangeal joints between the base of the proximal phalange and the head of the metatarsal. And then the great toe only has one interphalangeal joint because it only has two phalanges. And then the lateral four toes have two interphalangeal joints 
proximal and distal, just like in the hand. Okay, so let's look at the um, bony prominences of some of these um, bones of the foot. So if I look at the navicular, on the medial and plantar surface of the navicular, right here, you see that? That's the navicular tuberosity. And that is the primary attachment site of the tibialis posterior tendon. So the posterior tibialis or tibialis posterior attaches to lots of the bones of the foot, but the biggest part of the tendon attaches to the navicular tuberosity. This is a palpable bony landmark that you can um, see, or not see, but possibly see, but palpate on the medial plantar surface of the navicular. On this medial view, we can also see the sustentaculum tali of the calcaneus. This sustentaculum tali on the, its superior surface has a facet for articulation with the talus for the subtalar joint. It's a site of ligament attachment. A very important ligament that attaches there is the plantar calcaneonavicular ligament that goes from the sustentaculum tali to the navicular and supports the head of the talus, which you see here. There are other ligaments that attach to that process, but there's a tendon that passes inferior to the sustentaculum tali here, and that's the flexor hallucis longus. The flexor hallucis longus passes inferior to the sustentaculum tali. Prior to that, and if you watched my video on the talus, prior to that, the flexor hallucis longus tendon was lying here on the talus in this groove between the lateral and medial tubercles of this posterior process. So the tendon has this course. On the plantar surface of the calcaneus, well, we see this large calcaneal tuberosity, large calcaneal tuberosity, and it's the site of attachment of the, of the Achilles. This is where the Achilles attaches. And this flat area here is where the bursa that's deep to the Achilles tendon resides. So on the plantar surface of the calcaneus, let me position this right. On the plantar surface, there's a medial tubercle and a lateral tubercle of the calcaneal tuberosity. Those are for muscle and ligament attachment. The medial tubercle is much more prominent. The flexor, excuse me, the plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis attaches to that medial tubercle or the largest por portion of it. There is a smaller portion that attaches to the lateral. The flexor hallucis brevis, uh, the quadratus plantae, some, those are intrinsic muscles of the foot also attached there. When you're weight bearing, it's the medial tubercle that's in contact with the ground. The medial tubercle or process of the calcaneal tuberosity. I have a real um, skeleton here. I was going to show you some of the same... Um, same uh, features. So this is the plantar surface of the calcaneus. You can see the sustentaculum tali here, groove for the flexor hallucis longus. You can see the large prominent medial tubercle or medial process of the calcaneal tuberosity. That's where the plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis attaches, flexor hallucis brevis, um, quadratus plantae, and in someone with plantar fasciitis, this is typically where they have exqui exquisite tenderness, is right on the medial um, process or tubercle of the calcaneal tuberosity. On this posterior view of the calcaneus, you can see this smooth area here that's on the superior part or proximal part of the calcaneus, 
and then this roughened region here. This is where the Achilles tendon attaches. So if you get a chance when you dissect, when you cut the Achilles tendon, you'll see Kager's fat pad deep to that tendon, and then you'll be able to put your finger or an instrument deep to the tendon, and that's where the bursa is that's deep to the Achilles tendon. So it's either called the pre-Achilles bursa. It goes by multiple different names. If I get a piece of paper, a post-it note, let me see if I can just make an Achilles tendon so you can see. So if it attaches here. Let's do a side view here. If it attaches here, then this space is where the bursa resides between the calcaneus and the Achilles tendon. Earlier we were talking about the navicular tuberosity. Here's the navicular tuberosity on this real bone or real skeleton. Um, so that's, like I said, is attachment of the tibialis posterior, the primary attachment. Okay, let's look at the cuboid. So here's the cuboid. And if we turn the foot over and look at the plantar surface, we can see that the cuboid has a tubercle and a groove. So on the plantar surface of the cuboid, there's a groove that's distal to the tubercle. And this is where the tendon of the fibularis or peroneus longus tendon lies. So the peroneus longus tendon comes from, you know, travels retromalleolarly or from travels posterior to the lateral malleolus and then travels in the groove, wraps around the lateral side of the cuboid and travels in the groove of the cuboid and then ends up attaching to the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal. Many times there's an accessory bone within the peroneus longus or fibularis longus tendon, and you'll see a facet on the cuboid for where that accessory bone or sesamoid bone articulates. If we look at the fifth metatarsal, we look at the base of the fifth metatarsal, it has a tuberosity on it, and that's for attachment of the fibularis brevis or the what used to be called the peroneus brevis that's a common site of avulsion fracture the fifth metatarsal is also there are other fracture sites um, uh, that are common there are three different zones for fracture sites this is zone one the avulsion zone two is in this region and then zone three would be more distal. There's so many um, features I could I could talk about in this video, um, but I think I've hit some of the major features. If we look at the real cuboid, here's the tubercle, and then there's the groove. So the groove is distal to the tubercle. That's for the peroneus longus or the fibularis longus tendon. Okay, I hope that, um, hope this was helpful.